Hi, my name is Michael. In this video, I'll give you a quick overview of the iOS 10 UI kit for Sketch that you can get from applypixels.com. This is a massive UI kit with a range of screens found in iOS 10 along with a comprehensive symbols collection. Each interface element has been meticulously crafted in Vector, making this a super versatile tool when designing iOS apps in Sketch. What you need is a copy of Sketch 3.0 or later and this folder that you downloaded from applypixels.com. In the folder, you'll find a sketch file and a readme file. Let's go right ahead and open up the sketch file. It looks something like this. In the first page up here called screens, you'll see a collection of iOS 10 screens, including lots of the new stuff like widgets and messages. Each screen has been carefully recreated from iOS assets to give you as exact a tool as possible. Now these serve as great inspiration for when you are creating iOS 10 apps. You could just start to create your app inside these artboards right here, basing it directly on top of iOS 10, but mostly these are here to symbolize the many different screens and conventions that are in use throughout iOS 10. Let's get to the real magic. This next page is called Symbols, and in here you'll find all of the interface elements as symbols. If you're new to symbols, you're gonna have your mind blown. If you're not new to symbols, you know just exactly how powerful this actually is. In many ways, the Symbols page just collects all of the iOS interface elements in one big mood board. You can copy and paste these things in if you like, but I wanna show you another and more versatile way of working with the symbols. Let's do a quick example of how I work with this template. You can go ahead and create a new page. We'll call it App Design. And we're going to create a new artboard. I'm gonna insert Artboard. And I'm going to select a predetermined iOS device size. Let's go for an iPhone 6. Now we have an iPhone 6 sized artboard. And you could, you know, go to the Simples page or the Screens page and copy things into this artboard. But you could also just go to Insert, go to Simples, and here you have all of the most common iOS interface elements. That's really cool. Let's find a status bar. There we go. We'll place that. And let's add a nav bar. Here we go. Slide that into place. And you know what? I think we're designing a location-based app here. So let's find a map. There we go. Just drag that down. Going to add current position marker we're right here. And simply by using this drop down here with the symbols, you can build out your interface. Now that's really cool. Let's duplicate this artboard. We'll remove some of these objects. This next screen will be different. This next screen will have some sort of navigation on it with five taps. Place that. Now you're imagining you're building out this interface. Maybe we have tens of screens or hundreds of screens even. And this is where the power of symbols comes in. Double clicking a symbol like this navbar here will take us to the master symbol inside the symbols page. Now let's say that we've started out designing this with standard iOS 10 elements, which is quite common, but now we wanna skin it. Now we wanna to start to create a visual language that's different from iOS 10. Well, what we can do is we can edit this master symbol, this master nav bar. Let's go ahead and change this fill into wonderful yellow. And I can now return to instance. And right then, all of my nav bars have been updated with this new master symbol. This is incredibly cool when you are making changes across many different screens. Now you can go to the sketch documentation and read more about all the wonders of symbols, but let me just show you one last trick. If you're in a single instance want to override some of the details of a symbol, um, like in this case, we'd kind of like to change the title of it, uh, we can just add that right here under overrides. This will be maps. And in this case up here, it's navigation. Also, let's just go in and remove that button. We won't need that. So that's how you use this master symbols page to quickly create and propagate changes to your design across many different screens at once. If you drill down, there's more magic involved here. You can use shared styles. And when you add new text, you can select from a whole range of default iOS 10 system fonts. This makes it so much easier to keep track of all the different text styles that you use in your app. One last thing, if you're a veteran Sketch user, you might say, hey, Michael, Sketch already comes with standard iOS templates. Why even create a new one? You can go to new from template and you can select iOS UI design. Now, first of all, I think it's super cool that they're doing this. And you're right to ask the question of why you should use the template on Apply Pixels rather than just use the built-in one. 
choose whatever you like best. What I would say though is that they haven't updated this one for a while. They probably will eventually, but as it is right now, it does not include any of the new iOS 10 styles. It also holds quite a few UI elements less than the template that we've put together. And it doesn't include all the different screens laid out like we've done. Ultimately, questions of this nature will always crop up when you do templates. There will always be other alternatives, both free and paid or bundled. We'll always try to do the best tools that we can for the subscribing members of Apply Pixels. That's a very quick demonstration of some of the neat things that comes bundled with this template. Here you can see how my new wonderful yellow tab bar has propagated across the many different screens. I hope this template helps you speed up your workflow when you're designing iOS 10 apps in Sketch. There's so many cool little features in Sketch that as a regular Photoshop user, I'm envious of. Now you can get this template and other cool design resources by becoming a subscribing member at applypixels.com. Thanks for watching.